Video games are definitely my drugs. My addiction. Too bad I can't play all of them because for one, in order to get said video games, you have to get this thing called a job. And you can't play a lot of said video games because of said job. I originally wanted to make this let sooner say like January or February, but one, I'm lazy as hell. Two, work drains me. Three, my mindset usually goes, why be productive when you can be playing video games? Also, more games get announced throughout the year, so that's also a thing. I'll just go ahead and skip out on all the fluff and list out the games I'm probably gonna get right away and eat my greasily earned cash. I work fast food. Don't get any wrong ideas. Anyway, starting off, we got the Sky of Six Defiance of Destiny. I only played the Sky of Five Complete Edition. I also played the first game, but I couldn't really get into it that much. That one threw me off, but 5 wasn't as hard to work at with most of the mechanics. I do hope most of these characters are enjoyable. So far so good after playing the demo. Do you know the DLC characters from previous games won't be around at all until like, late August? I really wanted to use Asalia. She's so cute! And Desco too. I'm definitely going to be streaming this game on the 29th. Next up we got Monster Hunter Stories 2 Rings of Ruin. Oh boy, another one on Night 4. But with one of the reoccurring characters I saw from some of the trailers, how old are they? Unless there are some flashbacks, there's quite a bit of characters that there's no way in hell they'd be older than Red. We'll have to see how this game goes, and I'm probably gonna get this on Switch instead of Steam. There's supposed to be some multiplayer thing going on, so that's where I'm torn on deciding. The game is like a rock, paper, scissors RPG, but the monsters you get to ride, especially when they first hatch, are so cute. Hell, they even made a fucking Kezu kind of cute, and those things are an abomination. If they do some kind of PvP-like thing like they did in the first game as well, I'm down to try that in the post-game. Neo, the world ends with you. Okay, most of the games so far were all listed from the Nintendo Direct from, like, months ago. And this is the one that I had most interest in. I'm really hoping the characters in this one are good, and I'm really curious to see how the gameplay along with your buddies fighting with you works. Because in the first game with the Switch, it was not fun with Joy-Cons. I had major cramping issues with this, so it was only really better to play it in handheld mode. Which would have been fine if I didn't have to have a dock to stream it! I mean, I knew the World Ends With You game in general is pretty sick, but come on. We got Show Minamimoto, my boy! Next up, Kena Bridge of Spirits. Oh, thank god this one is available on PS4, not just PS5. I mean, there's a PC version too, but I'd rather try to focus on my consoles for a while. Now, when I heard of this one, I was really loving what I was seeing in terms of graphics. Also, the music sounded good, yet familiar. I looked up Everlab and the music composer, and it's Theophany. The same one who's been doing the Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask remixes. And oh my lord, the work is so good. Turns out they also collaborated together to, for the fan-made Majora's Mask video, Terrible Fate, which is really good. I really do hope the story and gameplay are good, but I do know in terms of graphics and music, this game should be in good hands. Look at these little guys! <coughs> Moving on, we got Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Uh... The character models for battles are looking pretty good, I guess, but the overall just felt underwhelming to me. Gen 4 is my favorite, and this just feels like a letdown. I'm totally down for mining in the underground and hopefully secret bases, but please just have at least, like, Battle Frontier or something. I don't care if you don't include the game corner because stupid gambling and has to keep it at the age rating for kids. Just make it mostly good. I'm still gonna get this game no matter what and probably gonna nuzlocke it for the hell of it. We'll just have to see where this one goes. Last but not least, and probably one of my other most hyped games, is Dying Light 2 Stay Human. Dude, I swear I better have a new PC with this, or I'm gonna have to get this on PS4. Now, the news of this game was going pretty quiet until this year, but just Dying Light in general, oh my god! I really loved the first game, but just in case, I shouldn't have high hopes. But damn, better parkour, new crazy variants of zombies. Not too sure about the first game, kind of replaying with my boyfriend to kind of make some comparisons, but this one totally gives you a reason to go out at night. I was a total wuss playing the first game at night, and I'm sure 2 will be even worse. But lesson learned, if I play solo, do not do hard mode. And no, I did not do Nightmare. Fuck that. Unless I'm playing with friends and want a harder challenge, that's not gonna be fun for me. Well, that just about does it. These games are definitely gonna burn a hole in my wallet this year. And most of them are actually spaced out enough for me to possibly beat them in a decent pace. Unless work bites me in the ass and changes up my days off. Then I'm going to be thrown off. If you guys are interested in watching me play any of these games, please feel free to visit twitch.tv slash I say a lot of dumb shit.
streaming days may vary.